Hello, it's Dave here from Megapoints Controllers. And today I'd like to announce the immediate availability of our Servo 4R controller. This is a four channel servo controller that also has an integrated relay drive here for frog switching and so on. Its form is similar to the 12 channel controller we do, but we've scaled it back a little to make room for the relays. So you have your four servo connectors here. You can hook up your switches through toggle switches here if you wish and control it using a, an on off switch. Or you can drive it through the network from a DCC module, a multi-panel or one of our mini panels. You could even drive one board from the other. The way it works is very similar to the servo controller we currently do where you plug in a servo like so and connect to one of the four channels. The big difference though with this board is that it also includes one of the relay boards. So you get a four channel relay board with it which is capable of switching up to 10 amps per channel on each of these outputs and of course the hookup cable. So the way this works is you take the black lead of the cable and connect it to the negative pin of the Servo 4R and you follow through with the black lead connecting to the GND connector on the relay board and that's your relay hooked up and now you have four matching relay terminals to work in conjunction with servos. So let's see this in action. So here's the Servo 4R connected to one of my demonstration panels. You can see the relays are attached through this supplied cable to the four-way relay module that's also supplied with this board. I've plugged in four servos. These aren't supplied and the reason they're not supplied is I don't know whether you want servos appropriate for moving points or operating semaphores with a bounce, both of which this unit will do and I fitted some toggle switches, power and channels one, two, three and four. If I flick channel one, observe the servo and it moves across and when it reaches its midpoint you can see the relay fired. Let's move it back and when it gets to the center point of its adjustment the relay will fire. Same for channel two, three and four and let's have one back on. So as the servo moves to its center point that's the time the relay is fired. So even if you adjust it so that it moves in some kind of wonky manner this will always compute the center point for the range of motion and fire the relay at that point in time. Now you might ask what use is a relay if you were using it to control a semaphore signal. So let's set a semaphore signal up and see. Let's do channel one. So I'll go and press the program button once and I can see I'm on channel one, it's flashing once, and I'm on mode one. So I'm going to advance the mode to mode three. Two, three. Then I'll advance the programming to exit the programming sequence. Two, three, four, exit. And now when I operate channel one, the relay comes on when the semaphore is at clear, and as soon as it leaves clear, the relay switched off. So you could use this for a function such as switching asymmetric DCC uh, for automatic brake control. If you have a suitably equipped decoder in your loco, this means that you could use this because it's integrated with the semaphore to automatically uh, bring your locomotives to a halt at a danger signal. The software has been updated and revised on this to make it uh, easier to operate. Now I'm going to walk you through some of the different features of this board so there'll be a little bit more information here. First of all it has the remote setup connector which duplicates these buttons on this pin. So if you want to fit the board under a layout uh, where you won't have easy access you can make a jumper, plug it in and operate it with your own push buttons remotely. So maybe you've been playing with the board on the bench and you want to factory reset it. That's easy. Power off. Press and hold the middle two buttons, power on and you'll see you get this red light flashing sequence and after about five or six seconds the unit is now reset into its default factory condition. Toggle switches are on the input and that semaphore bounce we had before has gone. 
If I want to adjust the movement range of this servo, all I need to do is select the programming button, which places me automatically in channel one, which is being flashed once on the channel button here. So now I can just press the low and the high buttons. So let's go from there all the way down here to make something really noticeable. There we go, three, four, five. Now when I operate channel one, you'll see it has a new movement range just over a little bit here and way over. And you can see the relay is firing at the center point. Let's turn channel four into a semaphore signal. So I'll press the program button one, two, three, four, and I'm now programming channel four. If you want a visual confirmation, count the flashes on the channel LED, the yellow one, and you should see four. So if we look, one, two, three, four. And if you look at the red LED, you're seeing a single flash there, and that shows it's in mode one, which is normal. If I want to reverse it, press the mode until it flashes twice, which is mode two. And if I press program, now you'll see it's going the opposite way to all the others. If I want to turn that into a semaphore, program one, two, three, four. And now I'll press the mode again to advance it to three. And three is a semaphore. And as you can see, when I fire it, off it moves pulls to clear and the relay fires when it hits clear and as soon as it leaves clear the relay fires and you can see the random bounce associated with it. Now I've brought the multi-panel back in this is just a test panel with 24 channels buttons so let's now convert this unit into network control so instead of using these toggle switches it's going to read its input from here power off hold the low button power on release and you see the flash, then you get two flashes to indicate it's on the default channel of two. And if I plug the multi-panel in, as I operate now, these switches do nothing. So they're disconnected because I'm controlling it from the multi-panel. And you can see here, that's still a semaphore on channel four, so it's retained the settings for that particular channel. To change the network address, whilst it's in network mode, all you need to do is press and hold the low or the high button for about one second, and the address will increment or decrement from two to 17, one being the multi-panel. That allows you to connect up to 16 boards of the classic 12 channel servo controller. And because this has a range jumper here, each one of those can be replaced with three of these boards, so it's 16 times three. 48 boards on any one network. If I want to advance the address to uh, the next one up, instead of using the first ones from the first batch of 12, what I'll do, I'll simply press and hold the high button for one second. The lights are on, it restarts, flashes, and then you count one, two, three. And it's now on channel three, which is the next block of 12 addresses. So if I press this button, I'm now controlling it from this area might seem a little odd, but if you remember that the initial servo controller has 12 channels, this is moving in that same 12 channel block. Let's go down an address. Press and hold the low, and it moves, restarts, and flashes a two for the default channel. And now I'm back on these first four. One, two, three, four. Now, because there's a range jumper here, I can jump the range from low to mid to high. And this means low is the first four in a block of 12, mid is the second four, excuse me, and high is the third four. So if I simply move this jumper to the mid position, what you'll find is these switches no longer do anything. It's these four now, one, two, three, four. And it's the same if I move it to the high position, you'll find it's these four now controlling it. So on any single address, I could have up to three of these boards sharing that address and each being individually addressable. Let's go back to the default on the low. And you can see it's working out of the box there. If you notice the red mode LED, when it's in network mode, if I move a servo 
the red LED comes on and that comes on for 10 seconds or every time you move a servo the timer is reset and what that's telling you with the red LED is that the layout state has not been saved into the memory yet and that there it is it's gone out now so it's written it to memory that means if you turn the unit off whilst it's network attached when you turn it back on it will remember the position of these so that it doesn't have to wait for a resynchronization from the multi-panel so this is memorized by the unit so if I change the way this works and I wait for the red LED to go out it's on a 10 second timer and we are out now when I power off that is memorized and it goes back to where it was remembered and there's the unit operating the relays are synchronized and clicking away as we'd expect power is from 9 to 12 volts 13.8 is the absolute maximum because we have a 16 volt in input capacitor and we want to stay below that thanks for watching the video on the servo 4r integrated relay controller i hope it was useful and it's available immediately from our website thanks for watching